All right. Key to the understanding of the operation of motors is the torque on a current carrying coil of wire. We've shown and we've talked about the fact that we can have a force on a wire segment, but what if you have a whole coil of wire like we did with the loudspeaker? And can we get a torque as well as a force? And the answer wouldn't, I wouldn't be talking about it unless the answer were yes. And that's the, the basic uh, idea behind the operation of a motor. So the idea here is this. We got a, a permanent magnet, north pole and south pole. These can also be replaced by electromagnets. And we've got a current that goes through this coil. So this um, kind of bluish colored thing is a coil of wire. And um, the math is a little bit slightly painful. And you can go through it in the book if you'd like. But the bottom line is, is captured in this concept. State the torque on an N-turn wire loop and define the magnetic moment. So we're not talking about forces here. We're talking about torques. Those are a turning force that causes something to turn. Well, we like motors to turn, and this is the origin of that turning motion. So what we end up with is actually quite similar to what we saw with the force on a wire segment. If you remember, for the force on a wire segment, it was the current times the length of the wire segment times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle. And um, we get a similar result here, except that if we have n turns, like we did in the example with the speaker, we've got to multiply that torque by the number of turns in that coil. This coil has only one turn, and so in that case, n here would be one. I is the current in the coil. A is the cross-sectional area of the coil. So that's this area here. Um, area of the coil or the loop of wire. It's measured in meters squared. Uh, I is the current in each turn or in each loop of the wire. B is the magnetic field magnitude. And uh, phi is the angle between the field and the normal direction. So let me define what I mean by the normal direction. Normal in physics means perpendicular. And you always have to say, a normal force is, is perpendicular to, this, to the surface on which it, it sits. So normal means perpendicular. So if this is the top view of the coil of wire, so, so we're looking down from above, here's the shaft, and then here's uh, what we're actually seeing in this diagram is this top piece of this um, coil of wire. The normal direction is perpendicular to the plane of that coil or that loop. So that's this direction here, perpendicular to the loop. And the angle phi that's pertinent here is the angle between that normal and the field, the magnetic field B, which is denoted here by red arrows. So the important point here is that if phi is equal to zero, then that would mean that this, this coil is oriented like this. So if the coil's here, so I'm taking it from there to here, then the normal, pointing perpendicular to it, is in the direction of the magnetic field, and that would be the case where phi equals zero. So in that particular case, we'll have sine of zero, and that gives us no torque. So the torque on this coil is going to be zero in that case. We're going to get maximum torque if phi equals, you're right, it's 90 degrees. So this is the uh, uh, demonstration of the operation of motors based on this torque. 
This is a simple demonstration of a motor. And what a motor does is it takes electricity delivered to some electromagnets and converts it into rotational motion. So we're converting electrical energy into mechanical energy. And the way that it works is that I have power connected up to this electromagnet. There are several windings around this green magnet. And it's going to be a south pole permanently. This one here is connected up also to the power supply and it will be always a north pole. And these replicate, oftentimes in motors, there's a permanent magnet that you use um, instead of these. But you can use a permanent or electromagnet, it doesn't matter. In the middle here, we have uh, current coming into current of opposite polarities coming into this contact and to this contact. So this would be positive, this would be negative, for example. And then that contact is connected up to this. This is called a brush. Here's uh, one on the front side you might be able to see better. These are the brushes of the motor. They make contact with what's known as the commutator. This brass-shaped piece here is called the commutator. It's, it ha it's in two halves. This half here is disconnected from this circular C-shaped half here. So what happens is that this brush makes contact with this half of the commutator at the same time that this brush makes contact with the other insulated half of the commutator. And the commutator allows you to reverse the direction of the current through these two magnets here. So for half of the time, this and until this gap makes contact with the brush, this will be a north pole and this is a south pole. And then for the other half, I'm sorry, actually, during this, at this stage, you want this south pole to, to attract this north pole. So at this stage in the, in the motion of the, of the motor, this guy's south, this is north, they attract each other, these guys attract each other. Then when it passes this point, then the commutator reverses the direction of the current through these guys. This now becomes a north pole and repels this north pole. Gets pushed away, same thing here. This becomes a south pole and repels the south pole. Then comes back around here. Remember, this is now a south pole. It's attracting this north pole. Now then it passes through that gap in the commutator again and, and then repels again. So that's a basic motion. Let me show you how it works. So each time all these magnets are in a straight line, that's when the current reverses in the central part of the motor and, and that allows the motor to continue to go. If you instead always have the same current, uh, if you don't have the uh, commutator and you apply the same current all the time, then you just get a situation where it's not going to move at all. You need the commutator and the brushes to, to allow the motor to turn. This is a, a regular motor with brushes. There are also brushless motors that don't have a commutator and don't have brushes and that control the motion of the, of the rotor. This is called the rotor simply by controlling the amount of current to each of the electromagnets. And these are used in um, like the segways and other uh, electric unicycles, that sort of thing. So that's the way a motor works. Okay, the, the loop tends to rotate such that it's normal, becomes aligned with its magnetic field. We talked about the fact that there was no force when the normal direction is aligned with the magnetic field. But there is a force 
if it's on either side and the and the objective is so it likes to be in this situation here where the normal direction coincides with the magnetic field when it's not it it tries to line it up it's like in the the demo where we saw that the north and the south poles of the two magnets attract each other uh, I forgot to define the magnetic moment. It's in that concept uh, right here. This little bit here, we're supposed to define the magnetic moment. This combination of um, variables, N, I, A, is, uh, is called the magnetic moment. N is just a number, so it doesn't have any units. I is a current, it's measured in amps or amperes. A is an area, it's the area of a loop, it's measured in meters squared. So the units of the magnetic moment are amp meters squared. So here's um, a, a question about the, the magnetic moment. A coil of wire is an area of that, consists of 100 loops, that's N, continues the current of that. The coil is placed in a uniform magnetic field. Uh, blah blah blah. Determine the magnetic moment of the coil. That's easy. Just multiply by the number the number of windings by the current by the cross sectional area, and that gives a magnetic moment in amp meters squared. And then uh, the torque on that uh, that the, the magnetic field exerts on it. Um, if the angle is uh, well, in fact, it's the maximum torque. And the maximum torque we'll get is, is in the case where that angle phi is 90 degrees. So the magnetic moment we just calculated times the field times the sine of 90, sine of 90 is 1, and that gives a torque of uh, 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4 newton meters. Um, we talked about the brushes. So the, this was brass, these uh, the commutator. that make contact with some kind of metal brush. They're not, they're not brushes like a paintbrush. Uh, they call them brushes just because it's brushing up against it, but it's metal on metal. And, um, and, and that's what causes your CD platter to, to rotate and hundreds of other applications for motors. You're taking electrical energy and converting it into Like a, a motor converts electrical energy to mechanical energy or motion. We'll also talk in a subsequent chapter about generators which do just the opposite. They convert motion into electrical energy. A lot of the same principles.